So, welcome. Uh, I'm going to start by asking you how you pronounce your name because I, I'm good at mangling names. I pronounce my name Abhilash Purohit. Okay. Okay. Uh, Abhilash Purohit. I'll give it a go. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yes. It's great to have you here with us. Um, obviously, the reason for this interview is we are delighted to have you speaking at Gamification Europe. Uh, could you? Introduce yourself. Tell us a bit about you. Yeah, uh, I am once again Abhilash Purohit. I uh, represent this company called uh, Gentle Bamboo Solutions. We are into the space of learning and development and uh, been in for a while now. I come from humble mechanical engineering backgrounds and somewhere along the line, my life took a weird turn and I am now into software development and uh, learning and training and that sort of stuff. That's cool. And obviously that's um, in big demand at the moment this year, especially with COVID. It was in demand anyway. Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, tell us a little bit about your solution. What have you built that helps people? Right. So we built this software called Dexter. That's pronounced uh, Dexter, but type D-E-X-T-R with a single E okay. dot I-O. And Dexter obviously is an homage to the serial killer Dexter uh, TV series because eventually we hope it will slaughter all uh, presentation software and be the one software that rules them all. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I did love that TV series. And I like the way it started with steak for breakfast in the, in the credits, but yeah. interesting yeah. naming choice. I like it. So yeah, the, the idea here is that uh, um, PowerPoint, Keynote, Google Slides, all amazing software, but probably were never planned to be used for delivering two-way training sessions in a learning environment, right? Because it, it is a speech. When you're using a keynote, you're not talking to people, you're talking at them. And the mm. software that we hope to uh, you know, achieve something with is this tool that uh, lets you give the control back a little to your learners. And what that does is that as you're presenting uh, your material, your participants or your learners have a way to participate back. We keep calling them participants, but they're not really participating if you're using a, a, a one-way delivery tool. This software uh, hopes to change that, and what we want to achieve with it is that we want to uh, solve a few problems, the, the primary one being one of distraction. Yeah. And so, so what's your talk called? Sorry, was it again? What's your talk going to be called? My talk is going to be uh, called Distraction, uh, Managing Distraction, or rather Embracing Distraction in a Virtual World. Yeah, I like that a lot, by the way. Um, a university where I teach, one of our things we've been working with for years is to have an always-on device methodology right. in the classroom. And so mm -hmm. working with that has been really interesting. So I'm, I'm, this is one of the reasons why I'm really excited to have you speaking and telling us about how we can take advantage and join in with these uh, distractions. So can, can you give us, like, without giving away your talk, what sort yeah. of things can we look forward to in it? Right, it, uh, I'm glad you mentioned a university because I gave a talk at a university yesterday. And this is something that very specifically we talk where universities have always kind of, and to a large extent, the world of learning has always considered mobile phones to be a distraction. So the two things we do with mobile phones is either we ignore of the, uh, you know, their existence or we go two steps too far and ban them, right? And uh, my, my point here is that it is a fantastic tool if you know how to use it. And uh, much of the talk that I'm going to uh, uh, be doing is going to focus on how to use that uh, adversary of sort and turn that into an ally and let, let mobile phone contribute towards learning rather than... Uh, Kingdom comet. That's right? fantastic. And I think everyone will like that. Yeah. So, on a slightly different note, have you uh, been to any previous gamification conferences? What's your experience of talking about and finding out about the subject? Yeah. So, I have attended every single conference on gamification ever, but it was on YouTube after the conference was over. Uh, one thing led to another, and we, we, I never quite found the right kind of uh, time to get into real conferences, but that is going to start changing with this year. Uh, I am uh, going to attend as many of them as possible because we are picking gamification as the hill that we are going to uh, make a mark on. So uh, 
Uh, to answer the specific question, I have not really attended a lot of conferences. Uh, I have attended uh, all of them after it though in uh, consuming all the content that comes out of either Gamification Europe cool. or... So, okay. Uh, any, any highlights from Gamification Europe past conferences that you've watched on YouTube? What could we direct people at? Yeah, I mean, uh, there was one uh, talk specifically which was about uh, uh, having a narrative and not having that pretty much uh, kills uh, uh, sessions, right? And yeah. I absolutely loved it. Uh, and there was this time when I was uh, listening to these on audio when I was driving, and I used to drive like three hours a day one way to my office. Uh, thankfully, those days are gone. And uh, that was when I uh, consumed a lot of gamification content on YouTube uh, while I was driving. And this one stood so uh, much out for me that you know I remember that uh, very well. And uh, I like to do that in my sessions as well. Okay. There are a few. Yeah. This this. Brilliant. I think that's a great, great call out. Anything on narrative is really useful in gamification. Now, I haven't really announced many of the speakers yet because you're one of the first I'm interviewing, but what are you looking forward to at this year's conference? Right. I am looking forward to this. This one uh, a title I found very intriguing. Am I allowed to talk about it yet? Or, yeah, go for uh, it. Okay. This is about that arthritis memes business. I did that that title blew my mind away and I'm like so much looking forward to what that is. That's um I really like that one. That's why I was the first speaker I announced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the fact that he starts off, you know, the introduction starts off with saying that, you know, uh what happened. Huh. <laughs> Lost you for a moment there. You said something about the introduction quickly again because the internet cut out for a second. Right. The introduction of it was so amazing where it says what happens when coins and badges don't work? How do you influence people when that does not work at all? And, and I was like, all right, that's that's a great point to start a discussion on because we